Chris of the Great, and I am back with another episode of Building a City. Uh, if you remember last time, I worked on an auto return minecart drainer, and uh, I put down this rail to go back to the chunk quarry, which is right here. Um, and I believe I showed you all of that. Oh, and hey, look. My tree grew. It's uh, 17 tall, so that'll be interesting to deal with, with future plans. Um, and then the other thing is, well, you can't see it right there. I haven't pulled out that um, that platform, and I'm not going to because I'm going to cover this whole thing back in, okay? And then re-terraform and grow some more jungle trees. And this entire area is going to become my automated. Uh, farm area. So automated reed farm, melon farm, pumpkin farm, chicken farms, both cooked and raw, and then uh, the gold farm is going to go in here as well. But um, that is all after the witch farm gets going, um, which is going to take a little bit, of, well, it's a lot of effort for that thing. But I did put in hopper droppers all the way down, save a little bit of hoppers. Not like I need to, because we've got the iron farm, but uh, I just, well, I had these hoppers here, or uh, droppers, so um, let's turn that sound down. So I just felt like using the container, um, that container object, since I had plenty of them. So um, anyway, um, I did move the circuit back down to this level, so. Um, ultimately, what I want to do is drain items from here into the minecart. And so it'll drain stuff from the top. And it'll have this thing, so if there is not an item in the hopper, uh, we're, we'll have that clock circuit going. Um, this is just to separate it a little bit from the uh, comparator here, because that messes with the um, the overall circuit so I didn't want to really screw something up and then if this went down it connected with that one and then that torch burnout. out so this just is a little bit of separation to compact this circuit into a smaller area um, because we've got some more space constraints here uh, anyway I wanted to show you this so I'm just gonna put one thing of cobblestone in okay I'm going to hit this button. I'm going to send that on. Bye bye. And then let me tell you what I want to do. I want that thing to come back and then pop onto this track. And so it's going to load up and then after a certain period of time, leave. Okay? Um, I've looked all around the uh, Minecraft community for something to easily detect if a minecart with chest is full, and there are, okay? So don't get me wrong, there are, oh, here we go, there are ways to do that. Use a detector rail, oops, um, let's see, and nothing in there, so it got rid of it. Let me get my items back. Um, so you can use a detector rail, that's all well and good. Um, if there's a signal strength of 15, and that means all slots are full. Um, the problem is that the cart has to be on the detector rail, um, so you, you can't easily switch, or at least I haven't seen a way to switch. Um, if the cart is full, push it to a powered rail. I haven't found that. So um, I tried thinking of some ways to um, fill up a chest first, lock this hopper, and then once this chest is full, unlock this hopper, or lock this hopper, unlock this one, let it fill, and then once this is empty, move the cart. That's a bit convoluted. So instead, what I'm going to go for is a timer. So I'm going to set up a timer and let it run. And so um, we're actually going to get that started here now. The problem is that um, 
we've got some space constraints to deal with. Oops. Efficiency 5. We've got a number of space constraints here. I can go infinitely in this direction. Well, uh, technically yes. And I probably will clear out some just for good measure. So what I want to do is build a timer and once that timer hits then um, that's move stone. Um, once it finishes its circuit then it's going to power this thing. Okay. You see some of the issues we have already. right? I've got output from this hopper coming into here and I've got a whole clock right here. You know what I could do? Let's move this out one. Okay, you can do that with just like this. Okay, you can detect the output like that and then we'll just move it out a little bit. I've got that. Okay, and so we'll do repeater. This will give me a little bit more room. And then we'll set that. We're going to set it to maximum delay right now just to reduce the potential lag. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. No, that's not right. There. Out in and there's the output. Okay. Now, I need to power this from a clock. And I need a long running clock. And uh, one of the ones I found that is pretty good is the one by Etho. Um, and do I have all of my items here? No, I'm getting some inventory clog. Let's get rid of this stuff. Just put it in here. Okay. I don't need that anymore. Um, I've got a hopper here. Only one? Are y'all seeing some? You see anything I'm missing? I guess I didn't have all my materials ready. Alright, so we need one of those. We need two uh, sticky pistons. Uh, we're going to need one of these and a redstone block. The, the lever is just for a turn off switch. I don't want to do that here. That way, if n even if nothing is in, that's still not going to do its uh, do its thing. So uh, let me let me cut real quick. Um, I will build the clock on camera, but uh, let me let me cut so you don't have to listen to me figuring out where I'm going to put this thing. Okay, um, I will be right back. Alright ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am back and I've cleared out more of this area. We do have space to grow so I don't I don't have to keep it as compact necessarily as um, one of these really neat tutorials might do. Um, but I do I just have to watch out. I've got a circuit there. If I power that block that's going to mess up that clock um, and then I can't power I got to make sure I don't power this one prematurely. So um, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to start first with I want the output to come in to this block. Um, I can't come on to this one. I've got to keep it separate because otherwise that'll mess up this comparator. Um, I could come in this way, uh, but the output. Um, from this particular clock is pretty particular. So um, 
or it's it's in a specific spot and I need the rail to come this way so uh, we need the output at least here so let's just get started um, this clock is uh, designed by Etho of Etho's lab on YouTube if you're not familiar with him um, I suggest you check him out he's got some really cool uh, redstone stuff um, he just he studies the game and, and does a good job of, of uh, explaining it back so um, so we'll go here um, I will link his tutorial in the video um, so yeah let's see this block right here this redstone block is going to be the one that does the signal and so if it's in a certain position th that rail is going to be on if it's not that rail will be off and I may just turn that into a pulse uh, who knows uh, we shall see when the time comes so let me let's see now we got hoppers we need a hopper we need hoppers facing into each other you notice this one's facing down so what I'm going to do is first hold shift because if you just click oh it's raining that's not my time okay. so if you click it if you right click to try and place it's going to open up the hopper user interface so you need to hold shift so it's like you're sneaking right there that's the term in minecraft and then you right click okay so you notice here it's pointing towards this hopper but this one's still pointing down so take this one out and ha huh, you got caught and we'll do the shift thing again okay now we're going to detect whether there are items in the hoppers and then we're going to use that to power a couple of blocks and then we'll have redstone a little redstone dust behind it and that's going to power this uh, this set of pistons so um, look, just to show you let's put um, let's put seven items in there all right okay so you see how that's going it's going to go down 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 and shift okay so whenever this is in front of a hopper it's locking the hopper um, which keeps the items from moving so the other hopper is going to drain completely and then cause that piston to deactivate okay so this is what I'm gonna do uh, now let me bring let me bring the redstone signal up okay it's currently powered not powered powered mm, not powered all right and then I don't want this to just be continuing while I work here. Alright, so that's going to stop. And they're, they all gather over here, so it's stopping in the on position. That might be a bit problematic. We will see, okay? I, I've done some basic tests in a, tutor or a test world. Um, but not completely okay the next thing is I only want this running if I've got a minecart here and the best way to do that is to use a detector rail okay when a minecart goes across the detector rail it sends a redstone pulse not a signal a pulse unless the uh, minecart sits on the detector rail so what I want to do is I want to detect that a minecart has come in, turn on the clock, the minecart comes over here, and then uh, the clock will run for however amount of time, and, uh, and then it'll go on, okay? So uh, the minecart will sit there for a little bit, fill up just as long as this clock is going, and, uh, and then leave, okay? And then when it goes back across, I want to turn off the clock again okay the circuit that I'm gonna need for that is called uh, let's see what a T flip-flop okay so that's gonna turn a pulse um, well it's, it's kind of it turns a button into a lever so it turns a quick pulse into something that has um, an always-on signal 
Okay, so there is a pretty good one by Mumbo Jumbo that requires a comparator. Do I have another one? No. All that is back at the house. Woohoo. Okay, I will be right back with some comparators. All right, see you in a bit. All right, everyone, I am back. If you notice right here, redstone comparator. All right, so now I am going to build a T flip flop, and it is a circuit that will um, it really keeps a memory. Um, so it gets a pulse and it turns on. It gets another pulse and turns off. So you can turn a button into a lever. Um, if you notice, a lever has an always on or always off signal, and a button has a an on pulse and then it turns off. Okay, so sometimes you just want to use something like that. Uh, say you want to use a button to turn on lights. Well, lights need a constant power source, so you use a T flip flop to keep them always on. In this case, we want the T flip flop to turn this clock on or turn it off. And so um, one of the things we need to keep in mind when we're doing this one is uh, the block that we want powered. Now um, I may have to change some things around with how this all gets set up, but um, for now I'm gonna I want to power this block right here. Okay with the output from the T flip flop. Um, I've got a possible interfering circuit right here. I can't get too close to this stuff. Um, so what I could do, uh, and I need the rail to come, the rail is going to be on this side. And then I'm going to need detector rail to uh, do the actual triggering on that T flip flop. So I may just opt for digging out more. Um, that honestly, that's probably the better option. Yeah, that's probably the better option. Yeah, so that that's what we'll do. Oh hey, look at that. I figured if I dug enough out that I'd find something of worth back in here. We aren't, you know, we're, we're pretty high up in, uh, in the Y, so there's nothing interesting. It's just going to be coal and iron. Um, not as exciting now that we've got the iron farm. Oops. More iron. So I'm just going to knock this out. And then I'm going to build that T flip flop. I'm going to carry the output from it into this block here. So I'm going to need this one. We'll just set that right there. That's my output. Okay. So the output is going to be on the top block that we need. So we'll get our dropper here. This is a pistonless. T flip flop, and it is a design by Mumbo Jumbo, um, whose video I shall link in the description. Hopefully, I remember to. It's a bit dark. A bit dark for my taste. So I did knock out some torches. All right. So, how this one works. The power to the T flip flop is going to come into that dropper right there, and the output's going to be here. So you just load this up with one item, and then just to show you, you know what? It's not fully set up yet. Need a hopper. So you want a hopper going into this. So this button is going to power this dropper which shoots the item into this one it's also going to power this dropper which then shoots the same item up into this hopper and this hopper then uh,
puts the item into this dropper, okay? And this comparator is determining whether there is something in this dropper right here, okay? And then the next time around, you hit the button, and that item is going to go down because this button powers the blocks surrounding, uh, adjacent to the block it's on, um, and the block itself. So right now, you see, we've got one piece of stone in there. You know what? I like stone. Let's put a little bit of cobblestone in there, shall we? Okay. And now we've got output. Okay. Did we get that one? Yeah, I did. Okay. And then say we hit the button again, and that timer turns on, right? And we don't mind it going right now. Okay. And then what we'll do, hit it again, and it's going to turn off. Okay. And now, unfortunately, it is turned off in the where the clock is in the on position, but we will work on that. Now, I don't want to hit a button here. I want the minecart to do the work. So what we're going to do is cover this all back up cobble where people can't see it, smooth stone where people can, and bada bing, bada boom. All right, now, I want, you know what, I still needed this one open. Why'd y'all let me do that? Okay, so we'll go like that, and it's facing that direction, but uh, that's fine. All right, should, I repeat, it, you know what, that will not actually work turn a bunch of smooth stone into cobblestone. Look at me, picture of efficiency here. And I actually need a half slab. We have a half slab, and it's all of cobblestone. You know what? I've got a little bit. Okay, so the reason I do this is I still need to be able to use or place something on. And this should power, I repeat, should. Yeah, should power that one. Okay. And then we just lay some rail. And we'll get this down here. How am I doing on hunger? Well, it's not too bad. Okay, and that's got to make the curve. So we'll just put some powered rail here. Okay, and then we'll do the curve. could try it out um, and just see what happens, I guess. Oh no. Whatever will happen if I do that. I've got an inventory clog already. Alright. Now we need a minecart. And we've got one. And we need a chest. that here, 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 and moment of truth, actually, oh, and it's gone. I 
want the clock off and I want it interesting okay so now it's no so this one's not working hmm You get to see me debugging this stuff, folks. That cart should be back here. You know what? Maybe once it comes back. Yeah, here we go. Did it trigger? No, it's still not going. Okay. Well, here's what we're going to do. Yeah, see, this one's still not triggering. I, I wonder. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe it can be right beside. I thought I tried this. Let's go back this way. No, no, no. Okay, come on. Oh. Problem is... So it did get some stuff, that's cool. And I've got inventory cloth. Alright, so have you seen the issues? Issues? The other thing is that that needs to be more of an actual incline. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to incline this thing. Well, that's the only... I wonder if that'll fill up. You know what? Let me take a quick break, and I will be right back while I debug this um, so I don't take up more recording time. All right. Back in a bit. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, real quick, I just checked the recording time. We're almost at 30 minutes. That's a little bit more than I would want. So let me... Ooh, ooh. I'm getting some lag. Getting some lag. Okay, there we go. So you see what I've done is I've made this an incline. It's going to still drain from here, but it gets a little bit of an oomph to make sure that that minecart... How in the world? Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. That was really strange. You saw that, didn't you? You just glitched into the wall? That's kind of odd. Hmm. Okay. Never mind. Uh, we're we're already over time. You see that thing just left, and um, the 
this will be filling back up. Um, okay, so the minecart comes this way, hits the detector rail, which triggers this. When it goes over, it turns off this cycle or circuit, which lets the clock go. So it's going to time for about a minute and a half to two minutes. That's about what I want. And then when that comes back in, we're going to send the minecart on back to main base, and it's going to empty out this whole thing. Okay? Oh, there we go. And yeah, something is off. I will take care of this, and hopefully by next episode it will be ready. But uh, this is Soap the Great. Um, that's it for this episode. I will see you next time.